back at the garage again today and um, while I'm waiting for a few bits and pieces to arrive from MGB Hyde, which should be here tomorrow, I thought I'd finish off cleaning up the rest of the engine, getting this side compared to the more complicated side. And um, I've been quite lucky because the guy who works with, Nick, uh, with my brother, Keith, um, Vince, he's brought in a steam cleaner which is imported from China. It's a tiny little thing, uh, really compact, but it really gives brilliant steam pressure. I'll just show you that. It's a very, very real nice machine. It's a shame it's all written in Chinese um, and they're not kind of available, as far as we know, they're not available over here, but it's a powerful little machine. Let me show you. So here is this little machine here. Yeah. Uh, got a digital display and not sure what all the instructions say as a as I said before but basically uh, this tube just goes into a container of water and that will very rapidly turn that water into steam and um, then you've also got another tube which you can drop into a solvent like a degreaser so it will take both water and degreaser and then just shoots it out of this nozzle here apparently works as a pressure washer as well it could deliver just straightforward hot water or straightforward cold water but it works uh, as I say really really good it's surprisingly powerful I'll just show you this in action now as you can see I've already started um, steaming the end this side of the engine the the fat and oil or grease rather is just literally breaking up just building up pressure. So as you can see, that thing is really, really powerful and um, it's a tool that I want to have, like to keep. I'm sure you'd have lots of uses for something like this. So here are the results of after steam cleaning around in the engine bay. Down here came out particularly well. That steamer um, just blasted off all the grease from there. That's made that area look really nice. And then over here which is where I want to work on in a little while I've just broken down all the heavy grease deposits now I'll just wipe it over with thinners or something and um, get ready just to give it a bit of a spray like I've got on this side there and just to make it look nice and clean and tidy meanwhile last night I uh, took the steamer home and worked on these wheels now they're not a hundred percent but they've really come out a lot lot nicer um, than what that looks like and that over there looks like it's quite nice to finally be able to get the wheels on and see what the car looks like with Yeah, that's changed the look of the car completely now. That's given me a bit of enthusiasm to struggle through the wheels on the other side. So uh, while I'm waiting for some bits to arrive today, which uh, as I say should be the hoses, I'm going to undo 
whatever I can from this side so that I can put a bit of black spray on this side of the inner wing. Another day has passed. I had to rush off early yesterday because uh, the property I own, the roof had blown off. So I was literally only here for a couple of hours. But before I left, I managed to get one side, the other side of the engine bay um, sprayed and uh, looking a lot tidier. Again, I'll just show you that. So this is what this side of the engine is looking like now. And a lot more uniform now that it's uh, spray black. I've had some new parts come in today so I've got a whole new set of hoses which I want to replace. I've also bought this which is the um, carburetor balancing kit so that helped me get the carbs right. I've also ordered the colour tune kit which will help me uh, get the mixtures right on the carburettors. On the advice of Gritty uh, Wombat, thank you for the advice, he suggested I should change this unit which is a heater valve because the diaphragms tend to go on them uh, and then you'll end up getting water going inside the engine. So. This arrived as well today, a brand new one of these, so I'm going to be sticking that on there too. And finally, um, a new water and oil gauge has come today. Uh, that's because the wire, which is this thing, um, has come apart and apparently it's a sealed unit which should go into there, I believe. Um, anyway, it's become detached and as uh, MGB Hive said to me that it was um, it's a sealed unit and you can't just change the cable. So this thing uh, this thing comes complete already with that end already attached, ready to go on. So I'm going to try and get these bits on today. Um, in the few hours that I'm going to be here. So for the first job I'll get rid of these old hoses and put new ones on. This here is the heat sensor for the Kenlo fan and uh, one of the main reasons why I wanted to change the hoses were because this goes through the pipe like that um, to pick up the temperature of the water and where the hose has sort of lost its elasticity as this cable is running through here it, it's not compressing nicely around this bit of wire and it's sort of making it leak so it's probably just good practice to change hoses every so often anyway but that gave me the excuse to change them I've just had a catastrophe just put all the pipes in and uh, finished off what I had to do in the engine bay and thought I'd give it a go at firing it up and seeing how it sounds and I filled it up, put antifreeze in there and everything so I was like really excited to start it. Put the battery on and um, turn the key and all of a sudden smoke started coming out from the engine bay switched it off and yanked out the lead from the battery and um, smoke was coming out of the distributor. The reason is this. At some point this wire here had come disconnected and it was hanging around here next to this terminal like that. So without even thinking I've plugged it onto that there and obviously what I've gone and done is shorted something so when I've sort of gone to switch it on I'm basically just bridging a live wire not realizing I mean truth is any idiot would know that one would go on this side one would go on that side but that's any idiot apart from me in this case so 
I've completely burnt out the um, points. Here you can see what's, what's happened to the wire. It's just completely melted it and um, there, is, there is a sort of plastic fit in there which sort of clips that bit there to it. That's just melted. You see all the melted plastic down there. So that's completely ruined my Saturday now. Uh, tried ringing around uh, local um, spare shops, but who's going to have a car uh, points for a car that's 48 years old? Yeah, that's a shot in the dark. So it looks like I've got to order these in, um, which ain't the end of the world. But when you're a baby like I am, and you get overexcited about something and you get let down, it's um, a disappointing to say the least over there is the rubbish bin and it's full up to the brim of god knows what and I'm pretty sure my old points are going to be in there and just for the sake of it just for the sake of me going home knowing that I've started the car I'm going to empty that bin on the floor and go through God knows what to find those old points and have another go at starting it. I'm going to do that uh, when my brother shuts in the next hour or so because I'm going to spread the rubbish all over the floor. Yeah, so meanwhile, um, I'm not ready to go home yet. I want to spend a few more hours on the car. So I've decided I'm going to start taking out the interior ready for... Uh, the bit of welding I've got to do underneath where the jacking point is and get it ready for a new set of carpets which I plan to order for this week and so the um, upside of that the bit that did make me happy is I've already started taking out the seats from the driver's side and just want to show you the floor pan look how good that looks there's no rust on there whatsoever anyway, Absolutely solid. So that's a good basis. As I said, this is a good car. I got lucky with this one. It looks like it's all original, and I somehow doubt that it's even ever been resprayed. Hence, like sort of scabs and things like that on it um, here and there. But even the seals, which are sort of totally solid. Totally solid, there are no welding marks anywhere, there ain't anything to tell me that there's been new sills added onto this. It's just a really good old car with a set of burnt out points. But it's a good basis for a restoration. I doubt that I'll go as far as respraying this. I think I'd rather leave it as it is and use it or whatever I decided use it keep it sell it or whatever but I think I'd rather keep it original warts and all um, I suppose as they say every little mark tells a story and maybe sometimes a bit like an old coin when you polish them up they lose value when something's as original as this which is only a one owner car apparently as I say I'm still waiting for the log book it's just almost worth keeping the way it is Now, 
the only thing is, I think there should be like a little plastic clip there because that's what looks like it's melted on the other one. This fits in there like that. And my phone's going. Okay, it's half past six and it's Saturday night and I really should be home but I just really needed to finish off what I did. As you see, I managed to find the points, uh, the old points in the dustbin. I put them in, started the car up finally and it seems to run really well. Apart from a little leak that I've got on a hose there where the Kenlo uh, cable goes into the pipe for the sensor. That seems to be a little bit of a problem. It's running slightly rough and I'll just show you now how well it sounds anyway, but it's sounding better than it sounded at any time up to now. didn't sound as healthy as it did sound before but when I had it started up earlier on and it warmed up it was running and idling quite smoothly it still needs a tune up and I've ordered the colour tune kit to uh, I think I mentioned that already to um, tune it up and because uh, I think the mixture is probably running either weak or strong I don't know but it has been running really nicely uh, one of the things that I need to do is adjust the choke because it's not got enough choke at the moment but I think that's why it's cutting out and possibly that's why when it warmed up it was running quite smoothly so yeah that was the progress for today meanwhile I will all do another set of points to renew the old ones that I've got in there and just a final thing that I want to show you now that I've ripped out all the carpets you can see that the floor pan is solid all the way through from front to back so I'll be ordering carpets for this uh, at some point this week. So that's all for this episode and uh, the next one will be when I'm putting in the carpets I think. So uh, don't forget to subscribe if you want to sort of see the follow-ups to this and thank you for watching.